This is Sparta! Hey there, it's Gloria with Warrior Yoga. It's time for another intro to yoga class. This one will be the last in the uh, regular base poses. This is standing postures. So um, we'll just go ahead and get down to it. Uh, some of these poses that uh, you've already done in the sun salutations. Um, so just bear with me on those and this will give you just a little bit of extra practice. So we're gonna go ahead and ground down and in every asana you want to connect with the breath, breath and send, um, start an intention. I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Uh, it's been a few days since I've done a video. So, um, well, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're gonna come to mountain pose. And this, your big toes will touch your shoulders, over hips, over knees, over ankles. It's a proper alignment of the body. Your shoulders are pulled back, your palms face forward, your stomach is pulled in tight, your quads are lifted up off your knees, you're grounding down through all four corners of the feet. So you can close your eyes if you can maintain balance and start to connect with the breath. Set an intention for this class. Breathe in deeply, expand the belly. Breathe out, pull the belly in towards the spine, lift the pelvic floor, breathe out, an audible breath. I like to call it my dark Darth Vader breathing. So you should be sounding pretty silly when you breathe out. It's a very audible exhale through the nose. Inhale, exhale. Again, this is mountain pose or Tadasana. So the next pose we will do is called Tall Mountain or Uttira Tadasana. So all you're gonna do, you're in the same position here and just inhale the arms straight out, palms face up to the sky. You can connect the hands. Sometimes we'll also do a sort of a back bend with this and just push the hips forward and the arms back this is Tall Mountain or Uttira Tadasana. So mountain, tall mountain. Now for here, we're going to go into a standing spinal twist. So inhale for length, exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Your hips stay in a neutral position facing the front of the mat and you're twisting from the um, waist. Breathe. This is standing spinal twist. Breathe in the arms back up overhead. Breathe out, left arm front, right arm back. Look to the back. Inhale the arms up. From here, we'll go over a pose that we've previously done called Uttanasana or forward fold. So inhale up high for length. Exhale, fold down over the legs, pull the belly in, relax the head down towards the floor. Your quads are pulled up off the knees. You're leaning your weight slightly into your toes. You don't want to be back like this. You want to try to keep your hips over the ankles to intensify the stretch in the hamstrings. Now in forward fold, <clears throat> there's several options you can do. If you can't have your knees straight yet, that's fine. You work your way into it. You may have to have them bent slightly. Let me move this microphone out of the way just a tad here. There. So I like to grab the backs of my ankles and just pull my head down towards my legs. 
You can bring your hands underneath your feet and fold. And you can bring your hands underneath your heels. In this pose, you would work your forearms behind your legs. So this is Uttanasana, forward fold. From here, we're going to come into Utkatasana, or chair pose. So you're going to touch the ground with your fingertips to make sure that you're low enough. Sit your hips back. Knees don't go past the toes. Squeeze your knees together, glutes together. Lift the torso up tall. Lift the arms, open the shoulders wide. Make sure you're down low enough that your fingertips touch the floor. I sometimes rise up. So this is the full expression of chair pose or utkatasana. Very good strength builder for the glutes and the legs. So rise up to tall mountain. Exhale, mountain pose. Now from here, we're gonna go into garland pose or malasana. So I'm just gonna heel toe my toes out to about mat distance, pointing my toes out at a 45 degree angle. And what I like to do is inhale the arms up, connect the hands, and then just squat down in between my knees. Try to let your um, hips fall as low as possible between your ankles. You want to push your knees open. Squeeze the booty. Touch, chest is tall and open. And just hold. This is a very good uh, strength builder for the glutes. It's a stretch for the hips. It's a stretch for the low back. And again, this is garland or malasana. Low squat, it's got several different names. Now we're just gonna inhale the arms up, bring the feet back in to mountain pose, and I'm gonna face towards you so I can show you tree pose. So tree pose, all you're gonna do is bring the weight into the left foot, really ground down. And you wanna try to keep the left leg straight, but when you first start out, you probably have to have um, a bent leg. You don't wanna hyperextend the knee. So you can either come, if you don't have the balance yet, you can do tree like this, or you can come here you never want to be on the knee because it's very unstable. But the full expression of tree is to bring the foot to the inner thigh, upper inner thigh. And if you can't, if you're having a problem holding it, what your problem is, is um, you need to push your foot into your thigh, really squeeze and then push your thigh into your foot. So there's different variations we do with the hands. This is traditional. I like to bring my arms, my hands behind my back, um, getting, trying to grab opposite elbow for a good uh, chest opener. You also want the pelvis tilted forward for a good flexion in the glutes. And then for, to challenge your balance a little, you can lift the arms up and just sway the arms side to side like a tree. So we'll go ahead and release that down and do tree on the other side. So bring that left foot in to the inner thigh. Bring the hands to prayer. Lift the quadri white right quadricep up off the knee and hold tree pose, virksasana.
To help with balance, you want to look in front of you and find one certain spot to stare at. This is called your dristi. All right, from here, we're gonna go into eagle pose. So I'm gonna go back to the left side. I'm gonna begin to lift my right leg start to wrap it around my left leg and you may just be here but the full expression is to wrap your right leg all the way around to the ankle take your right arm wrap it underneath the left and try work towards touching the palms together then you're going to make sure your elbows and knees are pointed towards the front and you're going to squat down Keeping your balance, hold that dristi. And this is Garudasana or Eagle Pose. There's different variations you can do with the hands. I like to um, extend the arms out and up and then in and down. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that on the opposite side. <clears throat> So plant down into that right foot, bring the left leg up over the right, wrap it around. Now take the left arm underneath the right and try to touch the hands together, the palms. Make sure your knees and elbows are pointing toward the front. Set the hips back. Hold eagle. Garudasana. Go ahead and unwind. And the next pose we'll do is standing hand to big toe or Padangustasana. So what I'm gonna do is put my weight into my left leg. Go ahead and reach down with my two peace fingers. Let me get a strap real quick because um, you can also do this with a strap. So um, if you're not very flexible, in either part of the body. You can wrap a strap around that right foot. Just pull it in and extend it out. It may not come straight. That's fine, you're just working your way towards it. That left leg, the planted leg, is working towards being straight and the hips tilted forward for glute flexion. Extend the left arm to the left for a little more balance. But the full expression is to take the peace fingers around the big toes, hand at the hip, and extend the leg out long. We also do a variation where you bring the foot in and then extend it out to the side. This is standing hand to big toe, or padangustasana. Release that, plant down through the right foot, and we'll do the same thing on the left. So reach down with those left piece fingers, wrap them around the big toe, extend the arm out. And if your leg is straight, you're gonna try to pull that shoulder back into its socket. Most of us aren't that flexible yet though, so just hold here if this is all you have. Bring that in, slowly release it down. Now we're gonna do a dancer pose, or I'm gonna attempt to say this, Natara Jasana. <laughs> So stand with your feet together. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I don't have my water down here. <coughs> I'm just gonna reach down with my right hand and grab the inside of my right foot. My left arm comes up. Now you're really gonna try to squeeze the knees together, keep them together. Start to kick the foot out behind you 
and then up for a slight back bend. And then to go a little deeper, you can crawl the hand up above the ankle and really woo, keep your balance and start to extend the foot tall and back. The hips are trying their best to stay square. The left leg is straight. Again, this is Dancer or Natara Jasana. Go ahead and release that and we'll take it on the other side. So left arm, right arm comes up, left arm comes around, grabs the inside of the left foot, kick the foot back behind you, and then start to lift up. You're keeping your torso raised up too. So it's sort of a back bend. Slowly come out of that. And now we're going to do Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon Pose. So I'll start on my left foot. Usually we're in Warrior One or Warrior Two, so I'll go ahead and come to the front of the mat here. So I'm grounding down through my left foot. Really spread those toes and try to ground down through all four corners of that foot. So I'm, what I'm going to do is lift my left arm up, start to bring it down, and I'm opening up this hip. See, this is squared and this is open. So from being squared here, I'm just going to open. Uh, let me show you with a block too. So if you're first starting out, you probably want to use a block. Probably about right there. Just about maybe a little less than a foot in front of your foot. So I'm just going to bring my hand down to the block, open the hip out to the side, flex the foot, and then open the chest out to the side. This is Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon. So slowly come out of there and we'll just stand up straight for a second and we'll do it on the other side. So ground down through your right leg and I'll show you again, we'll come down straight, left leg lifts. This is squaring the hips. So the hips are pointed down towards the floor to open my hips. I'm just going to stack them on top of each other, flex that left foot. Keep the right foot pointed towards the front of the mat. Lift the left arm up, open. And you're just going to come down onto the fingertips for balance. Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon. You can also try to challenge your balance and begin to look up at the ceiling. I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> so there's one pose. Uh, that we I left out that I'm going to go ahead and add in um, is called standing splits. So I pretty much just showed you the pose that was the hips squared to the floor. So I'm going to be on my left foot here. The hands come down towards the floor. Left leg is straight and tight and you're just going to pull your head in towards your shin relaxing the neck and extend that right leg up towards the ceiling. Get it as high as you can without opening the hips. You still want them squared to the floor. So you can take the left hand, wrap it around the calf and pull your head in for standing splits pose. Now we'll just switch the legs out so bring the right foot down and just lift the left leg up.
bring that left leg down and we're going to move into a uh, warrior one pose so warrior one to me is not a good pose for beginners because it's kind of hard to transition in and out of so i usually replace warrior one with crescent pose but i'll go ahead and show you warrior one and this is where the mat alignment comes in very handy so you can know that you're getting your stance wide enough so i'm going to do it on my right leg first i'm going to bring my right foot straight forward on the top line of my mat i'm going to step my left foot back about hips distance apart my right leg my left leg is going to be straight and i'm putting the pressure into the knife edge of my left foot i'm bending down you can even move it back a little further bending down into the right knee and trying to keep a 90 degree angle in that right leg you want the thigh the back of the thigh to be almost parallel with the ground now your hips are going to be working towards front so this is open and this is square you won't be able to square your hips in warrior one but you're working towards it <clears throat> so you're really feeling a good stretch right here so this is the leg portion then you're going to really lift the ribs the front and the back pull the belly in lift the pelvic floor and reach the arms up warrior one bring the arms down step that left foot up about hips distance and you're just going to step the right leg back into warrior one on the right on the left i'm sorry bring those arms up overhead In all these poses also, when you have your arms up, you don't want to hunch your shoulders up. Keep them pulled down away from your ears so you don't get tension in your neck and shoulders. Now release the arms, step back to the pose. This is the pose that I like to replace Warrior One with. Also the Sanskrit name for Warrior One, I'm going to attempt it, is Virabhadrasana One. So this is crescent. Ashta Chandrasana. The half moon is Ardha Chandrasana. This is Ashta. So my feet, my toes are going to be on this first line here. And I'm going to step back around hip distance to my second line here. Maybe even a little bit further back. Because I want this front leg, the knee to be at a 90 degree angle. The thigh to be almost... Um, horizontal with the floor the left leg is tight if you have to have a slight bend in your knee that's perfectly fine but the toes should be in line with the heel shouldn't be back like this it should be up your hips are squared to the front lifting your ribs front and back pulling in your stomach lift your arms Now we'll just do it on the other side. So step that left foot up about hips distance. Step the right foot back. Lift the arms up for crescent pose or Ashta Tranjasana. Now from here, we're gonna transition into warrior two pose. So the front leg is gonna stay right where it's at. The back leg is just gonna drop down so it's similar to warrior one, but your foot is, your toes are pointed towards the side of the mat, maybe slightly at an angle. You're pushing down into that knife edge and instead of the hips being square to the front as in warrior one, they're open. Your right leg is tight. Your front knee is working towards being at a 90 degree angle and it's pushed out. Your chest is lifted. Now bring the arms up shoulder distance and look over that front fingers mm. 
Inhale, step the foot, right foot to the front of the mat. Now we're step the left foot back. <clears throat> so you want to get as low as possible to really feel the uh, muscles working. Warrior two or Virabhadrasana two. Now I'm going to inhale, step forward, and I'll show you warrior three. So we're just going to inhale the arms up and start to lift that right leg up, bending over. Keep the hips squared to the floor. If you need a block, you can have a block here for balance. Keep that left leg straight. Woo. Really pushing the back leg up towards the ceiling. Inhale back up and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So lift the arms up, start to hinge forward, lift the left leg for Virabhadra 3 or Warrior 3. Now from here we're going to inhale and just step that left leg back, come back into Warrior 2 and we're gonna come into uh, reverse warrior. So keep the front leg where it's at, back leg stays the same. Start to lower that left arm down the left leg and then side bend over that left leg. Really keeping that front leg bent. Now come back to warrior two Step to the front of the mat. Now step the right leg back. And we'll do reverse warrior on the other side. Let's bring that right hand down. Left arm comes up and over. Reverse warrior or Viparita Virabhadrasana. Now from here, we're gonna uh, move into side angle. So just start to bend your left arm, bring it down onto the left knee, and extend the right arm over. You should feel a stretch all along the right side of the body. This is extended side angle. Utita Parsvakanasana is the name in Sanskrit. I'll show you a little transitional move that may, will make it a little easier too. So we're just gonna rotate the arms up, the feet come out, and this is star pose. So I'm just gonna shift my right foot towards the back of the mat, straighten my left foot, come down into warrior two, bend the right elbow, bring it down onto the right knee, Bring the left arm up over the left ear. Really stretch out that whole left side. So we're gonna inhale, bring the arms up to star. Shifting the feet to 45 and then rotate the feet again into warrior two. And we're gonna do we're going to come to warrior two and then we're going to move the, the right foot into crescent. So this is a transition. So from crescent, I'm just going to start to drop the right arm down and the left arm up. This is revolved crescent. So your legs are staying in the same position, nice and low. Your right arm's down, left arm's up. Inhale, come back up to star. Rotate the feet into a warrior two position. Lift that left heel up into crescent. Now bring the left arm down, open up the chest into revolved crescent.
Inhale the arms back up, come to star. And we're going to do triangle pose. So triangle, usually we come into triangle from warrior two. So from warrior two, right here, uh, your right leg straight, front leg is at a 90 degree angle, arms are out. So all you're gonna do is straighten that front knee. Now you're gonna try not to hyperextend that leg. So the way you can do that is try pushing your foot towards the front of the mat and just come down the leg straight and open the arms up to the side in triangle. This is also called trikonasana. Now, as in warrior, you have the reverse warrior. We also have reverse triangle. So it's pretty much the same thing as reverse warrior, except the leg, front leg is straight. Now we're gonna inhale the arms up into star and take reverse or warrior to the back of the mat. Straighten that front leg and just extend. When you come down, you really want to move that right arm as far forward as you can. And open up the chest for triangle or trikonasana. Inhale the arms up, side bend to the back for reverse triangle. Now from here, we're gonna come into pyramid pose. So I'm just gonna slightly bend that front leg and turn the back leg to out like I'm coming into crescent, but I'm gonna keep the front leg straight. I'm just gonna Inhale to lift and then start to forward fold over that front leg. So this is pyramid. All right, so slightly bend the knee to come up. Inhale up into star. Now shift over to the other side of the mat and we're gonna come into pyramid on this side. So the left leg is straight, not hyperextended. The uh, right heel is lifted up off the ground. Inhale up for length and just fold over that front leg. If you need blocks on each side of you, that works also. All right, so I'm just gonna bend my knee and step forward and come on up to tall mountain, mountain pose. Now I'm gonna face you to show you um, goddess pose. So again, this is where the alignment comes in great. And usually when we're in goddess, we're either gonna step back into it or we're just gonna turn our feet. So your feet should be what is that, maybe three feet apart? So this is where the alignment comes in again. My feet are at a 90 degree angle, turned out. My legs are straight. First, I'm gonna show you star, and I'm just gonna lift my arms up to the side. This is a very good transitioning posture. So from star, I'm gonna connect my hands together and just sit down as low as I can. Keep the knees over the toes, you're pushing the knees out, keeping your balance, <laughs> come down as low as you can, try to get the thighs parallel with the mat. And this is goddess, and I call this prayer squat. This is what I do mostly. Very, very good leg strengthener. I guess this is also called horse pose in some uh, places. So you're really 
squeezing the butt and tilting the pelvis forward also here. Putting your weight into the outside edges of your feet, pushing your knees open, squatting down, chest is lifted, chest is open, push the hands in towards each other. Now from here, you're gonna inhale the arms up and just bring the heels of the feet out so your feet are pointed towards the front of the mat. I'm gonna inhale my arms out and then exhale, hinge forward from the waist, bring the hands down in front of you. This is wide-legged forward fold. So I'm just gonna exhale and pull myself in. Inhale, bend the knees slightly for, to protect them. Come on up. And here you can jump the feet together. And that concludes Intro to Yoga Standing Postures. If you like my outfit, I'm going to put a link in the comments. I got it from Ellie Active Wear. I'm going to start uh, buying from them. It's a monthly subscription of $40. You get three items the leggings, the sports bra, and you also get a shirt. The shirt had a hood, so it's not very ideal for yoga because the hood wants to flip over. <laughs> so anyway, again, if you live close by, I have classes in Sparta, Tuesdays at 6, classes in Cookville, Sunday at 2.15. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Stay strong, warriors. Namaste. This is Sparta!